It's Royce Jacob. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Crypto Convo, a series I make whenever I feel it's necessary, where we cover some exciting news and price action in the land of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, as well as some crypto related stocks. You guys know that I'm a Bitcoin bull myself, so I'm always pumped to sit down and record these. As always, we'll go over each topic that we're going to be discussing and then we'll dive into each one individually. In front of us, Bitcoin on TradingView. You guys know how we kick these videos off. Bitcoin seeing some pretty exciting price action over the past couple of days, coming up to almost scratch the $11,000 mark, just dancing on this line of resistance, success being rejected by this line of resistance that was again once a uh, once a line of support in the past ta 101 right there you guys what was once a line of support now a line of resistance it's good to see bitcoin following those technical patterns which is to be expected of course but not going to get too deep into it right now again you guys we will kick off the video with that and of course along with bitcoin we will take a quick look at ether um i will just run down this list right here take a quick look at link primarily eos um, some of the altcoins not doing so well right there so i mean I, that's pretty much all i have to say about that altcoins um you guys Guys, because I'm kind of I'm, I'm a little bearish on equities you guys if you have been tuned into the recent videos you would know that I am bearish on equity markets right now and altcoins specifically do tend to fall more towards the equities being correlated to equities as opposed to Bitcoin itself um, so I am tech I'm definitely more bullish on Bitcoin right now as opposed to altcoins so not really gonna look over those today Bitcoin is definitely the focus of this video and of course we will take a look towards the end overstock riot Mara some of our favorite plays within that sector as well okay so technicals aside, charts aside, let's take a look at some of our fundamentals. Got some fun news to cover with you guys. So Bitcoin bulls bet on BTC reaching $36,000 by Christmas. This has to do with options traders. This is interesting. Okay. So once again, we will kick it off in terms of articles, at least with this. Um, moving on, gold is dangerous. Why Jim Cramer will invest 1% of net worth in Bitcoin. Okay, so this this was an awesome podcast. This is a podcast released yesterday by Mr. Anthony Pompliano. I've recommended his work many times in the past he's one of the probably one of the individuals within the investment landscape in the financial markets overall um, one of the voices that i respect most I've, I've learned a lot from this guy and this is a great interview jim kramer i reference his stuff a lot as well mr mad money himself he's the old kooky guy that you guys might see on cnbc this was actually an awesome interview you guys so right here not gonna not gonna spend time on this obviously just because i'm shouting out this podcast but you guys check it out um number 383 the palm podcast jim kramer becomes a bitcoin bull um again these two I agree and disagree with many things they say, but agree with significantly more than I disagree with, of course. I do respect both of these two. They are both very, um, very competent minds within the investment space, in my opinion, at least. So this is a great listen. I had an, it was it was an enjoyable listen to. It was very easy to listen to. They're two cool dudes, and um, I definitely recommend giving this a listen. Okay, so. Uh, moving on from that, Bitcoin CEO MicroStrategies Michael Saylor explains his $425 million bet on Bitcoin. Okay, so this is the CEO of MicroStrategy. You guys might have heard of this public company. Um, this is a stock. So MicroStrategy is a stock that I have talked about a little bit in the past. We will cover that today as well because it saw a pretty good day today. I think it was up around 9% or something. Call options did extremely well today. So pumped on that. We will talk about this and we will actually lead it off. So it should be like that. Sorry about that. MicroStrategy makes good on promise to buy another $17,000 Bitcoin. So MicroStrategy is the company, the public company, very large company, mold over, over a billion dollar market cap on this company that has converted the majority of their cash reserves into Bitcoin. So this is huge. And I think this is important important because this is just the first step. Um, this is kind of the first domino to fall in my opinion. Now that they have kind of set the trend, they've made it known that a public company of, of, of solid scale, again, over a billion dollar market cap and micro strategy is putting the majority of their cash reserves in what they believe to be an appreciating asset that will fight inflation as the dollar is just being printed to infinity and beyond. Okay. So very bullish here. Um, again, we will go over literally just a quote that uh, that he covers, that the CEO covers in here that I thought was cool. Uh, and then we'll finish it off in terms of articles with Apple stock market cap shows just how small crypto is. So um, Apple, $2 trillion plus market cap. And it's, it's so volatile in the day to day, but roughly $2 trillion. You guys get the point there. Crypto is only like a 250 to $300 billion market. Overall, the entire crypto market. Bitcoin is $200 billion itself. So Bitcoin could 10X and just be just about scratch the size of apple that just put uh the reason i want to talk about this it's a little older so september 5th was this article but it just it just puts in perspective how small the cryptocurrency market still is in the grand scheme of the financial markets overall all right so a lot of fun stuff to cover there uh as always before we do dive in though i will ask you guys to please give the video a like if you do go on to gain value from it subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and check out my complete portfolio and daily newsletter first link in the description if you're interested in my exact plays my exact trades within the crypto landscape um 
all cryptos, all stocks included, literally every other sector as well. So check that out if you're interested. If not, no worries. That said, let's move on and dive into some TA. So once again, Bitcoin, uh, where were we at? Where are we sitting at right now? So as of right now, again, you guys, this when I record these, these usually recycle. So Bitcoin over the past couple of days, which is really what matters, seeing some solid price action. Once it broke out of this 10-4, again, this, this line that has acted as such a significant line of resistance, just a significant ceiling in the past. Um, you can see it was like just bouncing off this area for the past like week or so. So broke out of that, successfully broke out. Uh, we saw another daily candle follow that. And then yesterday is when obviously this daily candle happened and it did touch off the $11,000 mark. Okay, so just scratching $11,000, not quite making it there. But again, it did bounce off this line that we've had drawn here forever this line that was once a significant line of support so we will zoom out here to show you guys what i'm talking about here over the course of this rally this march rally you can see bitcoin said here since these lows um, along with these lows and this to make this line of support um, is now successfully using has proven to be using this line of support this previous line of support as a new line of resistance so on the shorter term time frame, I will need to see Bitcoin break above this, close at least a daily above this line, and ultimately to be short to medium term bullish on Bitcoin myself. You guys, I'm always going to be long term bullish. Keep that in mind. Medium to long term bullish, uh, that is as well. But in the short term, I will need to see Bitcoin break above this line of resistance right now. Um, again, that it, it has proven to actually use this line of resistance now over back here as well. So it is good to see that it is using this, but. Um, I will need to say break above that to become short term bullish to become short to medium term bullish. I will definitely need to see Bitcoin um, break above this downtrend. So on the short term time horizon, if I'm going to give you guys an estimate of what I think will happen uh, for sure, I'm very confident in this. I do think Bitcoin will at least come up to the 11 for maybe depending on when it hits it, of course, you guys to the $11,400 region to uh, once again, retest this lowering line of resistance right here. Um, at the very least okay so i'm expecting a move up i do think it will break above this but for me to be medium term bullish i'll say that i will need to see bitcoin break out of this lowering trend line that it has set since mid-august um if we can close a daily preferably a weekly above let's call it let's call it 11.6 if we can close a weekly above 11.6 i think that's safe to say then i'm very bullish on bitcoin and i do think that we will um continue to rally ultimately to retest one of these trend lines over here that we've set um one of these one of these rising tr trend lines on this rising channel that we've set over the over the course of this um of this bounce since those March lows. Okay, so that is a Bitcoin in a nutshell. Again, a weekly close above 11.6. I'm very bullish on Bitcoin. But at the very least, um, again, you guys keep in mind that we do have to see the equity markets do, doing pretty well. As of the time of recording this, DXY is in the green a little bit. Um, I will need to see. Okay, so you guys, if the dollar, which keep in mind, everything pretty much is pegged against the dollar if the dollar goes up almost every other asset on the planet is probably going to fall equities gold pretty much everything will do poorly especially considering they've done so well if we see a bump in the dollar which i think is pretty possible to be honest that would um that would kind of blunt my that would kind of blunt my bullishness on bitcoin at least in the short term i know these are opposing thoughts because um obviously if the dollar goes up Bitcoin and pretty much every other asset won't do too hot, but you guys, I'm, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen. I do think it's still possible that we see a bump in the dollar. I also think it's very possible um, to see the dollar break down again, just because of everything that's going on in the world right now. So it's hard to say there, you guys, but those are just, those are just kind of the, some of the thoughts bouncing around in my head. Um, if, if the dollar does break down, because it is the reason that I am technically bullish on the, not bullish on the dollar, but do think we could see a, subtle, a slight bounce is because it broke out of both these lowering trends. And it is kind of, it is again, now using this lower, this line of uh, what was resistance as a line of support. Now, I do think we could see a bounce in the dollar. So just, just keep your guys eyes peeled on that. These are a lot of things you want. There's a lot of factors at play here. Um, so sorry if it sounds like I'm kind of I'm kind of contradicting myself here, but just know you guys I am bullish on Bitcoin. I will be bullish on Bitcoin over the long term, no matter what happens in the short term. Um, I am bullish long term, and uh, as these these guys are as well. So let's cover this. Bitcoin bulls bet on BTC reaching thirty six thousand dollars by Christmas. That's a wild bet. That's pretty that's pretty bull play right there. Bitcoin options traders are preparing for Bitcoin to reach as much as thirty six thousand dollars by the end of twenty twenty. That would be nice. 
key to it key takeaways options traders bought 1444 call options on september 13th at strike prices above twenty eight thousand dollars the low volatility support to btc price above ten thousand dollars could soon exhaust the bears and lead bullish consolidation upcoming u.s elections and high volatility in stock market might be motivating investors to decrease their spot exposures bitcoin options traders have been aggressively buying call options at exorbitantly high prices leading crypto derivatives exchange deribit saw 752 462 and 230 contracts bought on September 13th at strike prices of $36,000, $32,000, and $28,000 respectively. Each contract allows a buyer to purchase one Bitcoin at the strike price at the time of expiration. The flood of purchases thus indicates that many traders expect Bitcoin to be at or above these three prices before the end of the year. So these are definitely some whale. This is this is some whale prey right here. Okay, these are some big, these are some big buys. And it's it's pretty rare that you see reckless if if three people and keep in mind you guys they could just be trading these on a move up so they could just wait for like like i, like I was saying like that move up to 11.4 and then sell those contracts because they will appreciate in price likely um so keep in mind that they could just be trading these contracts or they have zero um intention of of actually letting these letting these uh, realizing these contracts and and getting that bitcoin for that strike price if it does happen so keep that in mind but it is bullish that options traders that, that whales are are expecting a big move up because keep in mind you guys bitcoin like like we'll talk about a little later on is still just a 200 billion dollar market which is small in the grand scheme of things and it, it is still it is still there there is still the potential to mani manipulate it and that is one of the biggest issues with bitcoin is because it's it, it is a 200 billion dollar asset it is prone to manipulation okay so but keep in keep in mind you guys that the fact that these options traders these these large scale options traders are making bullish bets is in itself very bullish all right so moving on to this gold is dangerous why jim kramer will invest one percent of net worth in bitcoin cnbc mad money host jim kramer plans to invest one percent of his net worth in bitcoin because gold is dangerous Recently, Jim Cramer, the host of CNBC's Mad Money, says he might invest 1% of his net worth in Bitcoin. The famed investor drew comparisons between Bitcoin and gold and cited the importance of hedging against inflation. During a, uh, during a podcast with Anthony Pompliano, Cramer said he would take a shot at that with 1%. <clears throat> Excuse me. I mean, and I quote in his words, I mean, people talk about crypto... People talk about like crypto gets hacked or whatever. This is a quote, so he's kind of rambling here. I remember this part. It's when your kids can't find your gold. And that is, by the way, not so unusual. So this is why I'm fixated on needing to own crypto because I fear a massive amount of inflation and I don't have any. Gold will likely do okay. The houses will do okay. Those will keep running in place. The idea of actually making money will, holy cow, I'll take a shot with that 1%. So this is the thing, you guys. Gold, homes all safe haven assets, all stores of value, all fights against inflation that will inevitably occur over time. Maybe not in the near future again, because I I, I don't know what's going to happen with the dollar in the near future. Um, the FOMC meeting is actually tomorrow, probably when a lot of you guys are watching this Wednesday, September 16th. I'm pretty sure it's the 16th. Um, the FOMC meeting, the meeting of the Fed, where the Fed sits down and decides on monetary, po monetary policy from here will occur tomorrow. So that is a very significant that's a very significant event in terms of what will likely happen with the dollar, Bitcoin, almost every every asset on the planet will be affected tomorrow. So I will cover that in uh, in the trading week recap later this week, obviously at the end of the week. Um, but you guys, there's, there's just so many things floating around. I'm sorry, I'm kind of bouncing around here, but there are a lot of things that you should just kind of keep, keep in the corner of your mind um, when thinking about the potential price action of Bitcoin. But this is covering the fundamental side of Bitcoin. Again, you guys, I have made that video uh, in the past. I put, probably will make another video um, with a very similar title. Same argument is that gold or Bitcoin is gold 2.0. Gold is just gold. Although it has proven over, over the course of history, over thousands of years to be a valid safe haven asset, it is scarce, but it's not absolutely scarce. It's not provably scarce like Bitcoin is. It is. It is scarce it's for sure scarce but it's not provably scarce it's not digital it's inefficient it, it doesn't make sense in my mind in a world that is trending digital at such a rapid pace to be carrying around gold coins bitcoin you can have some bitcoin you can send it like you send uh, venmo or paypal or cash app or whatever it just makes more sense in the world that we're currently living in okay so bitcoin again has so much more significant upside keep in mind you guys bitcoin is only like 10 years old right now gold is thousands of year old years old and bitcoin still has so much ridiculous growth uh, potential ahead of it again like kramer said i agree with that 100 percent. I, th I think gold will do well i think real estate will do well i think any inflation hedge will do well but i think bitcoin is the fastest horse in the race in the words of mr paul tudor jones 
All right, so um, once again, you guys check out that podcast. I highly recommend it. Please wait until this video is over, um, unless you want to check it out now. Honestly, like I, I definitely recommend checking out this podcast because it's it's a it's a solid listen and it's an easy digestible listen as well. Okay, so check this out again, Pop Podcast, Jim Kramer. Moving on, MicroStrategy makes good on promise to buy another seventeen thousand dollar Bitcoin. Uh, Move down here, MicroStrategy acquired sixteen thousand seven hundred ninety six more Bitcoin for one hundred seventy five million dollars, adding to its previous purchase of twenty one. 454 Bitcoin. Now it owns 38,250. Nice even number there. I appreciate that. Bitcoin, according to its latest disclosure to the uh, United States SEC. This occurred the same day that, that its board of directors made the cryptocurrency its primary treasury reserve asset. It was also indicated that the company could add to its Bitcoin reserves in the near future. The company's CEO, Michael J. Slayer, that's a sick last name, also restated the same information in a tweet earlier today. So in the words of Michael, Michael Saylor, on September 14th, 2020, MicroStrategy completed its acquisition of 17,000 additional Bitcoins at an aggregate purchase price of $175 million. <clears throat> Excuse me again. To date, we have purchased a total of 38,250 Bitcoin, Bitcoins, um, novice calling it Bitcoins, at an aggregate purchase price of $425 million, including inclusive of fees and expensive. Grayscale's founder, so big fan of Grayscale. You guys have talked about Grayscale a few times in the past. Grayscale, the largest, the single largest owner of Bitcoin in the world. It is a trust. So similar to like GLD, if you guys were familiar with that, it's a gold trust. So you pretty much pay them to custody your gold for you. Grayscale is a Bitcoin trust. So you pay them to custody your Bitcoin for you. You don't have to worry about anything. You just own GBTC stock. Grayscale's founder, Barry Silver, reacted to the news of the tweet of his own, commenting on the race between the two companies and acquiring Bitcoin. Apparently, there is some kind of Bitcoin buying race between MicroStrategy and Grayscale. Game on. So this is just bullish for, for Bitcoin all around. Again, you guys, with with more, I, th I think, I think MicroStrategy is just the first of many public companies. I'm not saying it's going to happen soon. I'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow, this week, this month, whenever. But over the course of time, people are going to realize with a declining dollar um, long term, with a declining dollar over the long term time horizon, people are going to want an asset that that appreciates in value, not not declines in value, not because you can print it, because Bitcoin is a hard money asset similar to gold that will not depreciate over time. It will continue to become more scarce and, and more desired as, again, the dollar, every other global fiat currency declines in value. So I think, once again, MicroStrategy is just the first of many companies to do this in the future. Extremely bullish. They're very bold for making this play first, but I think they will benefit heavily from it, obviously, considering Bitcoin, uh, obviously considering that I believe Bitcoin will do well, at least. And again, uh, Grayscale owner Barry Silver, this, the, these guys are huge in this space. This just means more institutional buyers of Bitcoin. And this just means more, less Bitcoin on the market, making it even more scarce than it already is. Okay, so that is that. Let's move on to the single quote that I wanted to read with you guys. So this guy, Mr. Mr. Slayer himself. Um, I want something that I could put $425 million into for 100 years. So again, you guys, this just shows the bullishness in the long like in the long term of bitcoin the long term prospects of bitcoin um inflation is very real you guys a dollar is worth half half what it was like 50 years ago so just keep that in mind you guys and and that will continue that trend will continue especially in the world where we are still printing trillions of dollars so again you guys it just makes it makes so much sense this is such a smart and it seems so obvious and uh i'm sorry if i'm making it seem overly obvious but it just seems so in my mind, it seems so obvious that this is the play. At least if you allocate like just just ten percent of of your cash reserves into Bitcoin, I don't know why almost every company wouldn't do that. And I expect for again every public company, not every public company, but the like an increasing a, a quickly increasing exponentially increasing number of public companies to start adding five percent, ten percent of Bitcoin to their balance sheet instead of US dollars. All right, so finishing off of this and then we'll take a look at some of the other charts. Apple stock market cap shows just how small crypto still is. One takeaway, crypto appears to have a lot of room for growth. While the crypto space has seen tremendous growth over the past decade, the asset class still holds a tiny amount of value compared to mainstream markets, especially when pitted against giants such as Apple. Apple stock holds a staggering $2 trillion market cap, dwarfing all speculative capital held within the entire crypto space, which at press time totals a mere $350 billion according to CoinMarketCap. 
The crypto industry has grown from a simple concept in 2008 with the inception of Bitcoin's white paper to hosting billions of invested dollars. Bitcoin itself went from less than $1 per coin all the way to $20,000 at its all-time high, carrying a press market cap, press time market cap of roughly $194 billion. So yeah, again, this was about a week, week or so ago. It's now just floating around $200 billion, you guys. What's, what's a few billion at that scale? The entire industry, however, still sits at a fraction the size of Apple's total combined stock shares. The market cap of the blockchain industry as a whole could triple and still not reach Apple's market valuation. So again, you guys, just focusing on Bitcoin here, the greater the greater cryptocurrency blockchain space as a whole is pretty staggering as well to know that. But Apple, considering they have a two trillion dollar market cap, in Bitcoin with a two hundred a sub even at points, uh, it fluctuates. Remember, sub two hundred billion dollar market cap. Bitcoin could ten x. It would need to ten x to be at the level as Apple right now, okay? And keep in mind, you guys, Bitcoin isn't even comparable to a tech company that has has to deal with sales, financials, and whatnot. Bitcoin is an asset class of its own. It is digital gold. So it, it's not it's not subject to a board. It's not subject to financials. It's not subject to sales. It's just subject to people understanding that it is a valuable asset, that it is a absolutely scarce asset. I'll say, I'll say that as many times as they need to. And it does provide, it does prove itself to be a, a great inflation hedge over the course of a deflating dollar okay so that is all the fundamental stuff let's get on to talking about some ether once again bit bitcoin just uh just to round this up once again i will need to see to become medium term bullish on bitcoin a close a weekly close at least a daily close a couple days if i see two daily closes above 11.6 then I'll be medium, uh, definitely medium term bullish on Bitcoin. So moving on to Ether, don't look at this chart too much to be honest. So Ether, um, once again, is successfully using this line, uh, this line that was once a line of resistance and support, um, a very strong, a very strong line of support, both support and resistance, as you can see here, it did close. It actually closed these daily candles on this line. It bounced below them, but it ended up closing right at this line of support. Um, so Ether, I wouldn't be surprised just because it's not, it's not looking as strong as Bitcoin in my eyes to see it bounce once again, just continue to use this line of support. Um, until we do see Bitcoin break out significantly. So remember that you guys, although um, altcoins are showing a significant, uh, more correlation to the equity markets, and I shouldn't even say that too, because equities did all right today. So you can see equity indices, uh, I mean, I mean not great today, but they did all right. Uh, so so crypto and Bitcoin is, is somewhat breaking correlation. I can't say that with enough confidence right now to actually say it, although I did just say it, but I mean, I really, I really wanna see the cryptocurrency sector break like obviously break correlation to equities so if we do see the sector do say say poorly let's hope that doesn't happen but if this sector does poorly and the the equity indices do well over the next few days that's actually bullish in my mind from a medium to long term time frame or time um, time horizon perspective because it is breaking correlation with equities and i do i, I am short to medium term bearish on equities okay so keep that in mind i will like to see that that said ether i, I wouldn't be surprised just to just to sum this up i don't want to spend too much time on ether i'd be surprised to see it come up and bounce or come down and bounce off of like the 350 dollar region and uh, just continue to use this line as a line of support if it does break below this significantly it, if it does close a daily below this i would uh, look for uh, a pullback all the way down to this ultimate line of support uh say that happens within the next week that would bring it down to about 310. All right, so Chainlink seeing like a 20% correction since <laughs> since its all-time highs. Um, Chainlink, what did it, what, it topped out at just about $20 and currently floating at like 10.5. So pullback significantly, we are seeing, it's kind of hard to tell here. So there's a very obvious downtrend in Chainlink right here. Um, so I would, I would need to see Chainlink break above, say, it needs to it needs to break like twelve dollars just to round it out. Um, you guys can draw this line for yourselves on whatever chart you're looking at. But for Chainlink, um, I'm definitely not a buyer at these levels still. I, I honestly haven't sold much. I, I did sell. I actually timed uh, my Chainlink position pretty well and exited uh, out of my Chainlink position at pretty damn close to highs. It was like eighteen or nineteen bucks. So did pretty well there. But um, again, I'm not yet a buyer at these levels. But I'm, I'm definitely a holder. So I'm definitely not selling my Chainlink at these levels either. Um, that said, it does just need to break above this lowering, <laughs> very, very 101 right here. It does need to break above this lowering line of resistance for me to be bullish on Chainlink and, and um, consider establishing a larger position. 
So moving on, we'll talk Overstock, Riot, and Mars. So taking a look at Overstock, was down pretty significantly today. So Overstock has seen a correction. It is very successful using this lowering, um, this lowering line as a line of resistance. Now I will need to see Overstock close a daily candle above this line to believe that it's once again in an uptrend. But considering I am once again bearish on equities over the short to medium term time horizon. I do think that overstock will ultimately correct just because it's a run up so freaking much. I do expect overstock to come down ultimately to the to this area was floating at uh, for a while prior to its earnings where it gapped up right here. Remember that very impressive earnings there and saw a crazy run from about $50 um, to almost three xing to $130. Okay. So I do think that uh, you guys, it's just very common with such a such a hyped up stock like Overstock. And again, it, it it's earnings. They crushed earnings, and they do own the the crypto platform, the crypto exchange T Zero, which is obviously if crypto does well, that that uh, subsidiary, that branch of their business does well as well. And their actual like Overstock, like selling furniture and stuff, is doing well too. So I do think that Overstock definitely has potential going forward. I do think. Um, I'm not just a buyer. I'm not quite a buyer yet. I do think for for uh, if, you're, if you're taking the long term into account, I do think that these are great levels to buy overstock. Like if you just want to stock up on phys actual stock, that this would definitely not be a bad time to consider buying some stock. But for me personally, I do expect overstock to correct completely to the $50 region where it floated around for like a week or so um, in mid July prior to really exploding. Once that happens, I'm I'm loading up on overstock. I'm definitely stocking up on overstock. So that is that. Let's move on to Riot. Riot is um, kind of in a state of limbo right now. It's good though because it looks. This looks just so similar to what we saw after this first rally, right? So you see, you see some, you see some very bullish price action. You see the moves up. You see some capitulation. Or you see the bubble pop a little bit. Um, capitulates, goes flat for a while. We saw the exact same thing here. Um, Riot is still technically in a downtrend. So Riot will need to break above again. Close the daily above. Um, just to play it safe, 350. If if Riot can close a daily candle above 350, definitely a weekly candle above 350 will confirm to me that it has broken out of this downtrend and will likely start another uptrend. Um, again, you guys, Riot, Riot is weirdly correlated. So Riot is kind of, it, it's weird because Riot dances between correlation with equities and Bitcoin. It obviously makes sense for it to be more correlated with Bitcoin because Riot is paid directly in Bitcoin. So the price of Bitcoin directly impacts the financials of Riot. But a lot of it is just game theory at this point, you guys. If Bitcoin Bitcoin needs to break its previous highs, so if Bitcoin can break like fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars, then I think Riot will uh, could very potentially hit like ten dollars or just pop off. Because again, you guys, Riot what currently sitting at $140 million market cap. That is microscopic. It will not take much capital to flow into Riot to absolutely pop off the stock price. So if if Bitcoin does well, if some of these whales are right, if some of these options whales that we're talking about earlier are right, and we do see a $36,000 Bitcoin by Christmas, which is very optimistic to be completely honest, but not out of the realm of possibility. If we see that, I wouldn't be surprised to see like a $50 Riot to be completely honest. And Mara, same goes for Mara. So Riot, again, on the short term time horizon, we'll need to close a daily, just say above 350 um, to confirm to me that we are in a short to medium term uh, rally again. Mara has seen a very significant pullback. Okay, so Mara did um, a few days ago, or last week sometime broke out of this lowering trend line it is floating sideways and i do think that there's a significant I, I think there's so much more upside potential for mara uh than downside potential like i think it's very unlikely that we see mara pull back further unless bitcoin just completely collapses um but considering mara was at a high of 520 it is now i mean it's now what's uh let's let's take a look how much is it corrected i mean that's probably close to a 75 percent correction again right so right here at about 520 to where we're at right to the, we'll just go to the lows. 67% um, correction since it's high. So, I mean, pretty close, you guys. But, I mean, I just, I, I can't see Mara, just especially considering how small it is and how um, good some of the news that we've covered in the past is. No news recently, but, I mean, when, when was it? A couple weeks ago that we covered that great Mara news. So these companies are making, making strides in the right direction. They're actually doing, um, they're making tangible steps in the right direction to scale their operations. They're acquiring miners, they're acquiring companies. They're they're merging with co with other companies in Mara's case to expand their operations. And again, the larger your operations are, the more Bitcoin you can mine, the more Bitcoin you mine, the more money you make. So this makes me extremely bullish on Mara on the long term. I do think Mara, both Mara and Riot will absolutely crush it over the long haul. 
but again you guys just short term just with with all the like with all the unknown around correlation whether it's correlated to equities or bitcoin if equities tank well, what will riot and mar and overstock do as well um specifically riot and mar because again they're bitcoin miners they're paid directly in bitcoin so i would need to see bitcoin break correlation with equities and riot and mara gain correlation with bitcoin and like may like that is that happens sometimes but it's not clear enough so i will need to see that be made clear prior to be being extremely bullish once again on riot and mara that said i think the upside is significantly greater than the downside right now on both riot and mara um whatever goes down just because again we've seen such a significant correction specifically in mara okay so that is that you guys i think we'll call it there that was a, that was a pretty fun one went a little long but that's all right so if you guys are still around i truly appreciate you listening to all my ranting and rambling um please drop a comment down below let me know what you think let me know what you're excited about in the crypto blockchain space um what you think is going to happen next what you think is going to go down with bitcoin the, the dollar um equities whatever you want to talk about Always love talking to you guys. Always love learning from you guys. Once again, if you do want to know exactly how I'm trading this entire market and get an updated newsletter from myself every day during trading hours, um, please check out Complete Portfolio Daily Newsletter. First link in the description. Um, it's just more real-time updates from myself, specifically the newsletter. Um, obviously, update the portfolio in real-time as well. But the newsletter, I talk about the crypto markets, the equity markets, the dollar, pretty much everything, just what I'm thinking about the markets overall. So I do appreciate it if you check that out. It's a great way to support me and gain some value. At least um, I do my best to give you guys some value out of that as well. So again, first link in the description. Appreciate it if you check it out. If not, no worries. Look forward to talking to you guys downstairs. And as always, until next time, you guys, take action. Make waves. Peace.